all the best teams are there, all the best players are played in it. So, you know, that's the only competition really that um, can really get everyone really excited. Difficulty in actually winning it, and I think if to win a minimum of eight out of nine games, um, you know, it makes it a tough, tough competition to win, and always those tough competitions are the ones that are worth winning. Everybody knows what it is, what it represents, you know, high class, um, very tough, tough rugby. The Hannigan Cup is, is, is one of the prime prizes in world rugby, and we're glad about that. The European Cup is the ultimate prize for any player at club level. It's the complete test for a team. The big thing that the tournament has done is capture the imagination. It works for the players, it works for the coaches, it works for international coaches, it works for the fans. The Heineken Cup is 10 years old. For European clubs, it represents the ultimate challenge. The tournament has come a long way since its humble beginnings back in 1995. The very first match was held midweek in Romania, with Stade Toulousain taking on Farul Constanza. Toulouse ran out easy winners, but for a young centre on the pitch that day, it was a wonderfully different experience. I think there were more policemen at that game than spectators. It was always going to be very difficult to win there. Romania was just starting to enjoy its freedom, and it was a difficult place to visit. I remember the first try was scored by Jean-Luc Seste, a back row player. He grabbed the ball after a penalty by Delod hit the post. It was a bizarre try in a bizarre game and a bizarre start to the competition, but the tournament has grown so much since then and has now reached maturity. Ten years goes quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> I was coaching at the, at the very beginning of this and we never got into the tournament for the first year. It was a very sort of limited tournament that England weren't too interested in and um, Cardiff got to the final that year. And waiting for Cardiff in the final were Toulouse. It was a tight match despite Castagnier giving Toulouse a flying start. Extra time was required to prize the teams apart and Toulouse eventually prevailed to become rugby's very first European champions. English clubs had decided not to enter the first year of European competition, but once they'd seen what was on offer, they wanted to be part of it. The second final saw English champions Leicester take on Brieve, but the cup remained firmly in France as Brieve completely dominated the match. The next year, Brieve again made the final against Leicester's great English rivals Bath at a packed Stade Lescure in Bordeaux. The Bath contingent were outnumbered, as you would expect, you know, by uh, by the brief supporters. But they made enough noise uh, to be to be noticed by us, and we needed that, and uh, we used that, and used it well. And uh, even though, you know, in hand and hand, we probably say that the better team probably didn't win. You know, they were uh, the, that team. They were the dominant club team in Europe. Uh, but we had enough team spirit, uh, enough savvy and know-how out there, and we fought. We fought for everything. Brieve were beaten and the cup crossed the English Channel for the first time. Across Europe, fans, players and clubs were embracing the tournament. On and off the pitch, it had taken off. The level has gotten closer and closer to, to that of international standard, uh, which is a great thing for, for, for club rugby. I think it, it helps those making the transition from club to, to international a little bit easier. I think it makes for exciting viewing too. The way that they've promoted the game across Europe and the way that the supporters have grasped their weekend away down to Toulouse or a night out in Edinburgh, uh, I think that's become part and parcel of the competition and actually that has enabled um, the Heineken Cup to grow because it has had the fan base as well as the players understanding that it is now the premier club competition in Europe. The new millennium saw an era of English dominance, with first Northampton and then Leicester for two years running, keeping the cup firmly locked away in the heart of Middle England. But the French were regrouping. 2003 brought Toulouse roaring back onto the scene. Packed with class, they looked an awesome outfit. I'd say probably 85, 90% of the time they play rugby, it is hardcore, exciting, expansive, flowing, um, successful rugby. You know, that's a perfect agreement, uh, 
ingredient to be successful in the Heineken Cup. Toulouse were only denied their third European title in 2004 by the most dramatic moment in the tournament's history, when Wasp scrum half Robert Howley stole in for a remarkable last-minute try to seal a first title for the Londoners. I was on my way down to do the presentation when, when uh, I thought, right, that's it, Toulouse have won it, and here we go. And next thing I hear the crowd just take this it was like I'd won this inhalation of breath as the ball was just fell into the hands of Rob Howley as he scored. And, and, uh, magnificent moments. Even as I'm talking about them, I find that the hair on the back of my neck is even tingling. But despite that disappointment, Toulouse have remained the dominant force in European rugby ever since winning the first European Cup match a decade ago. In May, they defeated Stade Francais to become the only club to win the competition three times. The cup is back in French hands, and it may prove difficult to reclaim. And in the last three seasons, I think the French have taken um, the tournament to another level. You know, they've moved themselves on. They've become, again, the sides to beat. Uh, the difference is now, not only are they very competitive um, at home, they can play rugby away from home. They've learned really how to actually play uh, out of France successfully. And um, I think that's where the challenge at the moment in this season is going to be. How many of us can actually beat the French? It looked like the British clubs had worked out how to beat